we would like to move to the first challenge statement, close-up inspection of building facade. Uh, this will be presented by Zheng Hao, senior engineer from the Building and Construction Authority. Zhen Hao, over to you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thanks to being uh, I'm Zhen Hao from Facade Engineering and Technology Department, uh, Building Resident Group, BCA. Uh, I will briefly present our main challenge statement in Facade Inspection. And that is uh, how do we efficiently conduct close-up facade inspection to detect facade defects before any fallen facade incident happens. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, for your information, the Building Control Amendment Act for Periodic Facade Inspection, or in short, we call it PFI, was passed in Parliament sometime in March last year. So under this PFI regime, 100% visual inspection and a minimum 10% close-up inspection are required for all buildings which are subject to the mandatory PFI. There are many types of facades such as uh, plaster, tiles, brick, curtain wall, cladding, green wall, etc. So each type of facade may require a specific technology for the facade inspection. Uh, so it is quite hard to find a universal technology that can be applied to inspect all types of facades. Uh, next slide, please. For this round of uh, BMAP, we will focus on two types of facades. Uh, first is the cladding. The conventional inspection method for cladding panels could be using the boroscopes or complete removal of the cladding panels to inspect the conditions of the connections concealed behind the cladding panels. So uh, this method is uh, disruptive and time consuming. The second type of facade we are looking at is the plaster and wall tiles. The current way of inspection is to base on the professional judgment of a PE, uh, of a professional architect or a registered surveyor to determine the areas of possible defects, then follow up by close-up tapping method as, as shown in the small photo at the right-hand side. So uh, again, this, uh, this method may be time-consuming and we may have missed out building surface with defects if close-up tapping has not been conducted. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, this will bring us to this slide. Uh, for cladding facade, we are looking at, is there any other way we can inspect the cladding panels uh, to prevent dislodgement of the cladding panel and to spot the cracks and loosening of the panel before the cladding panel fall off? And for the plaster and uh, tile facade, we are looking at, if there, is there any other way we can accurately and efficiently identify building surface with plaster and wall tiles to be further uh, subjected to close-up inspection, such as a uh, tapping. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, this photo shows the connection behind the concealed space of a cladding panel. Uh, we may like to add on, we are also exploring new technology that can tell us the conditions behind this uh, tiny concealed space behind the cladding panels without removing, uh, without removing the panels, uh, such as the things that we are looking at is, uh, for example, is uh, where are the connections uh, behind the cladding panels? How many bolts per connection? Is there any missing bolts per connection? And whether is the connection is rusty or not? These are the, the few things that uh, we may want to know uh, behind a cladding panels. Uh, next slide, please. So I come to my last slide. So our main purpose of doing this uh, is to streamline the inspection of building facade and to detect facade defects early so uh, necessary repair and maintenance work can be done before any fallen facade incidents. Thank you. Thank you, Jen Hao. Uh, so now we'll be taking questions. So uh, do submit your questions using the Q&A button and we will answer your questions uh, in this session. Yeah, uh, Jen Hao, first I'll kick us off with a question. Uh, so you mentioned uh, you, you, 
you did elaborate regarding cladding facade. Could you also elaborate a bit more regarding what you are looking for for the uh for the plaster wall tile type facade in terms of uh the specific uh interest or the data that you think is good to collect? So uh, for plaster and uh, wall tiles, uh, I think the common defects will be something like uh, delamination, cracks that will e eventually uh, fall off uh, if we do not uh, take any uh, remedial actions to repair and maintain certain things. But uh, for example, for delamination, uh, normally what, what we did is that uh, before we can determine whether this uh, surface area is subject to delamination, we need to uh, have some telltale signs, and then we'll go and use some tapping method to close a uh, close-up inspection. For example, using a gondola to tap a location, and then use a, a tapping method to uh, to to listen to the sound, the echo sounds, and see uh, whether there's a delamination behind that. Lah. I think these are the conventional methods of uh, inspect the delamination. Delamination cracks are the other defects of a uh, wall tiles and uh, plaster. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we received a question from the audience. It's from Tune. Uh, do the solution needs to be infrastructure based or non infrastructure based? Uh, can it Sorry be a again. permanent? Uh, the solution needs to be infrastructure based or non infrastructure based. Basically, uh, he's asking whether uh, you consider a permanent installation. For I think uh, for for our solutions right uh, we would I would like to have something that is uh, uh, more permanent uh, permanent in nature that uh, it can uh, it can last for longer terms because we know that there's no such thing as uh, there's a uh, uh, for example facade facade got a materialized band so uh, but uh, for for those things that we want to have a solution, we will we will prefer it to be a permanent solution, a permanent more permanent solution. Okay, so basically, install in the building for continuous monitoring. Sorry again. When when you talk about permanent installation, is it something yeah. that is a continuous monitoring? Yes, all the facade uh will require I think a continuous monitoring and inspection. Uh, this is part of the regime. So uh, James Hayden asks, will AI solution be accepted instead of PE requirement? For, for those uh, AI uh, solution, because uh, for purely facade inspection, the PE is the one that, uh, that inspect the building and uh, to, sub to submit a report to BCA. So if, if uh, AI solution is to be adopted by the PE, the PE first have to be have a confidence, uh, a certain level of confidence to this uh, AI result be, uh, before uh, he is uh, satisfied with the result and then submit to BCA. So I would say that uh, uh, in terms of AI solution, it has to be uh, depends on the PE who uh, uh, inspect and sign off the report. Yes, Tsukun. Okay, so uh, this question is actually from the panelists. Uh, so Jason uh, asks, what is the skill level required for a user to be able to do this uh, with good standard of repeatability? Uh, so then can, well, can you please, uh, uh, I think, uh, just repeat the question. What is what? the skill level required for a user to be able to do this with good standard of repeatability? Oh, okay. For for a facade inspection uh, regime, right? A purely facade inspection regime, we we are looking at a competent person to uh to to inspect the building facade and to sign off the report. And this uh, competent person can be assisted by a facade uh, inspector. Uh, who can be a competent person? Basically, a professional engineer with a civil background and also a professional architect. Uh, can be registered as a competent person. And facade inspector wise, right, those are uh, resident engineer, resident technical officer, and uh, others uh, personnel that uh, BCA may prescribe can be a uh, facade inspector. All these personnel, uh, whether it's a competent person or facade inspector, they have to under uh, they have to go through a specific course lah, 
pertaining to facade inspection and has to pass the course as well. So uh, I think uh, for with that kind of a qualification, they can take up the facade inspection job. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jen Hao, for answering these questions. Uh, we don't have any, wait, okay, a question just came in. Uh, other than delamination and cracks, what other defects do you expect uh, the solution to detect? Those uh, defects that can subject, that will subject to ultimately a fallen off of the plaster is the one that, uh, plaster or wall tiles, right, is the one that uh, we are, we are looking at la. So uh, defects uh, might not be just a delamination or just uh, uh, cracks. For example, sometimes uh, efflorescence as well. Maybe efflorescence could be just an architectural kinds of uh, defects. But uh, if uh, if we do not attend to this efflorescence, right, subsequently as the time goes by, right, it may just uh, deteriorate. So uh, we are objective based. As long as uh, we uh, reduce uh, or to minimize the fallen uh, plaster or water incident, uh, these are the things that we are looking at. Uh. Yeah, objective base. All right. yeah. Thank you, Jen Hao, uh, for your time. Uh, we will be proceeding to the next challenge statement. 